Okay guys, now we are going to talk about the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. Now we are looking at some animation now and uh, through this animation we are going to discuss about the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis that means uh, how apoptosis affect the mitochondria. Okay, now let us look at that. When a cell is undergoing stress such as from the DNA damage, a viral infection or growth factor deprivation it may undergo the programmed cell death or called the apoptosis. Such death signals uh, are out routed through the mitochondria in a series of events as we can know in this intrinsic pathway. And this, this intrinsic pathway is uh, the target for this intrinsic pathway apoptosis are the organelles like mitochondria, chloroplast and so on. Now the death signals within the cell trigger in the activation of uh, pro-apoptotic proteins such as BACs. When activated, this BACs forms uh, oligomers in the outer membrane of mitochondria which form, uh, leads to the formation of uh, something. The, the oligomer leads to the release of cytochrome C from the mitochondria to the intermembrane space either by forming pores or by interacting with other mitochondrial outer membrane proteins. But this is the event which triggers the, this mitochondria to get towards the death because they lack this cytochrome C because the cytochrome C is coming out from the mitochondria into the intermitochondrial membrane space. While in the mitochondria, cyto cytochrome C participates in the uh, respiration process, uh, but in the cytosol, cytochrome C drives the cell into apoptosis. Now, cytochrome C binds to the cytosolic proteins called APAF1. With cytochrome C at uh, attached, uh, the APAF1 protein can assemble into a structure called the apoptosome. Now, this is the formation of the apoptosome along with the cytochrome C and APAF1. Now another protein called caspase 9 uh, which is, uh, the, which is uh, the mature protein from procaspase 9 is now activated by the formation uh, uh, by forming a complex with APAF1 in the in the apoptosome. Now caspases are proteases that have uh, cysteine C uh, residues at their active sites and cleave after aspartic acid as you can see that's why they call the caspase because we have aspartic acid region it cleaves after the aspa uh, aspartic acid and this is an ase that means this is a protease so so uh, how can you memorize this look for the caspase c denotes the cytocysteine residue which which, which, which it denotes and it, uh, you have the asp that means it, it is having it, it cleaves right after the aspartic acid residue and this is a uh, ase that means this is a protease so that's how you can memorize as this caspase thing okay so caspases are proteases that have the size 16 residue in their active size and cleave after the aspartic acid residues in their substrate proteins now two types of caspases play roles in the apoptosis uh, one is the initiator protein another one is the effector caspase protein the initiator caspase protein such as caspase 9 uh, are uh, the first caspases that are activated by the apoptotic signals the function of the initiate caspase is to activate effector caspases such as pro caspase 3 as we can see in this animation the procaspase 3 is now activated uh, through the proteolytic cleavage of caspase 9 if I just go uh, in the previous step and look for that then uh, this uh, this this uh, function of initiator procaspase is to activate the effector procaspase and this procaspase uh, 3 is activated now caspase 9 cleaves procaspase 3 and it produces the active procaspase 3 in, in this animation and these caspases like other enzymes act cat uh, catalytically allowing a small number of initiator caspases uh, to activate a large number of effector caspases so this is uh, the initiator caspase and it will in turn activate the large number of activator or effector caspases so as we can see this is a magnification loop which is going on from the uh, initiator caspase towards the activator or, or effector caspases now the effector caspases are being produced and lots of lots of effector caspases are being produced using this uh, 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 re, uh, this uh, complex of uh, what you can say uh, the apoptosome okay right after the generation of more and more effector caspases what happened the accidental activation of caspases could result in apoptosis but this is uh, prevented by the presence of a family of proteins which is called IAP or inhibitor of apoptosis protein now this IAP proteins which are the member of IAP family directly interact with the caspases and suppresses the apoptosis by either inhibiting caspase activity or or by targeting the caspases for degradation 
okay so it will block the activity of gas space either by the uh, blocking of the degradation uh, via the proteasome or or or, uh, or via the inhibiting the gas space activity okay now in mammalian cells the permeabilization of mitochondria by bacs results in not only the increase of the cytochrome c but also uh, increase of iap inhibitors now these inhibitors block the action of iap thus iap no longer can block uh, uh, this this cytochrome c to go so cytochrome c now can go freely and it it can act on uh, the say act on the cytoplasm it can uh, interact with iff1 and all these proteins to make the uh, the apoptosome complex now the apoptosome complex along with other uh, other proteins help the cell to go through this apoptosis division now the effector caspases are sometimes called the executioner caspases because they are responsible for the digestion more than 100 different target proteins thereby mediating the events of apoptosis so one key target of the caspases is an inhibitor of the dnas okay so which when activated is responsible for the fragmentation of nucleus so as you can see here what we are producing we are having the icad or inhibitor of dnas the dnas which is uh, the destruction enzyme for dna is blocked by the inhibitor when caspase acts on it uh, it will it will remove this inhibitor and that's how the dna is activated and dnas uh, cleave the dna fragments that's how the DNA can be damaged. Now, in addition, caspases cleave nuclear lamines, leading to the fragmentation of the nucleus. They cleave the cytoskeleton proteins, leading to the disruption of the cytoskeleton membrane uh, uh, um, blebbing and also the cell fragmentation. They also cleave Golgi matrix proteins, and that's how they can uh, stop uh, the protein trafficking system inside the cell. So not only they can act in one way, but once the caspases are activated, it can uh, lead to many different ways, like uh, the DNA fragmentation, nuclear lamin disruption, cytoskeleton pro protein disruption, as well as the fragmentation of Golgi apparatus. And that's how the intr intrinsic pathway finally in start to kill the cell from the inner side, uh, from the inter side of the cell so that's how the intrinsic pathway just take the cell throughout the apoptotic events and cell finally leads to death that's how it's done and I hope that 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 will help you to understand what is the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis and that's it thank you